and welcome to a game of Blucher. This is going to be 200 points. It's set in 1794, so it's early revolutionary French army uh, with loads of conscripts, quite poor quality, not very good cavalry. Up against Austrians with a smaller army but high quality, especially some of the heavy cavalry, the cuirassiers, and some nasty looking grenadiers. So have a closer look at the lists. Classic case of quality against quantity. So there's the French list. Uh, feel free to pause and have a look through for all the details. Uh, just two artillery on each side. If we find any more, starts to overpower the game. And if we play with just two, uh, our reloading rules work really well. Whereas if you had more, it probably overpower the game completely. And there's the Austrian army for you to have a look at. All that quality. But only 17 units against the French, 22. And the Austrians are going to be attacking, so it's a tough ask for them. The one rule we have abandoned completely is the general's activation. We just found that could really distort the game. I get the old juggernaut running, if you've seen one of our previous battles, with tons of French conscripts activated every turn. And also uh, defending gets a bit strange sometimes. So there we go, we're off and running. We've got the new scouting rule, the reload rule, and no general's rule. So the first bit of terrain goes down. Um, I said I'm defending. We've got the hill in the town on my side, and compulsory is at the other end. More scenery appearing. Generally, as a defender, I find just gets stuff in the way, messes up attacks. Okay, so we're getting close now. The final setup. Try and move some stuff around. Um, I don't want to risk rolling a six and taking things off, so I haven't really done much. Okay, so on the left-hand side, I've got my first core. Well, it's actually core three. If you're looking on the list, light cabs at the front to try and sweep out and do some scouting around the left flank, and then uh, screen of four units of conscripts. I think it's actually three from this core, one from the next core, and then um, some stuff behind. The center this time I've carefully placed them behind the hill, because um, I don't want them spotted. I want them to be able to keep their reserve move as long as possible. At the head of that column of four is the heavy artillery. It looks pretty clear, it's gonna come through the front, uh, sorry, through the middle, and they're well placed, and they can still reserve move if needed, if something bizarre happens. And there's the right flank, Similar sort of thing again, screen out front, light cab, just going to have a look around that right hand side. Um, and some heavy cab lurking. So what I'm expecting here is the main thrust down through the centre, and these can come in from the right. And the, the Austrian court top right corner, well it's got partly behind a wood, it's got to come through that gap between the fields really. And yeah, so I think we'll try and sweep around the flank, but it's a long walk. Yeah, so there's the battlefield, so it's really broken up. We've got an extreme left flank and an extreme right flank, and they're broken up by the difficult or impassable terrain. The swamp's impassable, feels difficult, and a sort of a, a, a sort of slight diagonal sweep through the middle for the main Austrian thrust. And you can see the Austrians, probably a cavalry unit on the far left, and then one core followed by another core, probably the Grenadiers on the far right. Not exactly sure what that is. He's got to funnel through into this centre. There's no real way. The blue flags, the objectives, one on the hill, one on the village. And I'm thinking, really, I just want to block things up. There's little gaps he has to come through. If I keep shoving things in those, I can slow him up, frustrate him. And because 15 turns is all you've got to take the objective. Okay, turn one. And you can see there the little green dice, number of activity points I've rolled for the Austrians. So uh, starting off, uh, coming around the right flank, coming pushing down the center. Sorry, pushing down my right as well. And that's all she wrote, because only six activation points. So just feeling each other out. Now I could have gone for the main core moves through the center first. Um, but, you know, uh, it was a low number, that could have been it. And neither flank would have moved, and it could be a real problem if the defender outflanks you. Even if just one light cavalry unit. Okay, so I've met the threat on the left. Some cavalry support the infantry and some conscripts plugging the gap. And plugging the gap in the centre. And <laughs> in front of the artillery, so good luck, lads. But uh, to stop the reserve moves, and just gets in the way. And again, I'm trying the cavalry because the French cavalry aren't very good, supported by some infantry. So if he charges and we lose, the infantry will do the shooting into the cavalry. I've got numbers, so just as well tie some stuff up. Hopefully, suck some more stuff into the flanks. Okay, the artillery opened up, triple one. So I don't usually show much dice, but triple one to start. Yeah, great. Not a good omen. Other artillery misses as well, so thanks a lot. 
And over to Austrian turn two, and I've rolled five. So we can't do an awful lot, not that he knows that yet. And it, I left the white markers on, ignore those on the left. You can see he's charged on the left of the cavalry, charged on the right of the cavalry. Another unit moves up in the center, and there's your five points gone. Okay, so like I said, the white arrows of my turn. Uh, the red charge is the key one. And uh, on the right-hand side, you can see my cavalry being beaten, and they come back, but they've only lost uh, was it one casualty, and my infantry well-placed to get some revenge. Uh, on this side, um, I think this time the French actually won, but it's just small-scale stuff. I don't want to dwell too much on the flanks. It's going to be a very long video <laughs> otherwise. All right. Oh, no, we've won that one as well. There you go. They've retreated back. Uh, check out the short retreat video I'm going to put out explaining how that rule works because it is a bit complicated. Yeah, Austrian artillery pounding that unit in the center for a couple of hits and the one on the right for another hit. So they're finding their range. Not good for my um, conscript. Really, I want to get those guys out before they're destroyed because they don't count against me and I've got plenty. But hey, start losing units. Seven units to break the French, five units destroyed to break the Austrians. Austrians are quite fragile. Uh, so the French artillery, not many targets, took a long pot shot at counter battery fire, got a hit, and good old Austrian, Austrian artillery has to retreat for a turn, which buys me some more time. See a blue flag on the village up there, that's my objective, we should try and get to it. So flush with the early success, the French cab followed up the charge again, but got beaten back. And we're pushing in the middle just to plug that gap, so those conscripts can have a tough job trying to hold that all day. And we're on turn three, and I think big fat 11. And you'll notice some big rolls on the activations for the Austrians. <laughs> ah, frustrates my plans. There you go, a nice generous guy I am. So there's the overall. You can see the flanks plugging away. And I've got two poor units going up to act as screens in the center. And the Austrians are winding up to get ready for their punch. All right, so you can see just following up on the left flank. We're slowly pushing them back. We are outnumbering them. Uh, but because you got 11, what I had done is set these infantry up nicely on the angles so I could shoot, um, so the French could shoot the Austrian corners and they can't shoot back. So I had all this lined up all the way across and you're thinking, well, with about four or five of these things set up, I can't move them all, I'm going to pounce somewhere. You know, even if it's just, he doesn't turn his artillery around or one of these is stuck there and gets shot. It's not game changing, but that's what we're doing in this game. Constantly trying to set loads of problems and puzzles and use up your opponent's activation. And then... Don't keep rolling 11 for them. <laughs> so you can see just jiggling around, but anyway, at least it's soaking up time. Fortunately, the French artillery done another two pips on the unit. Um, and the one artillery at the top has turned rounds back into the game. And a bit of fanning about on the right flank. I don't want to talk too much about the flanks. So you see, this is gone a bit. Um, but we are pushing him back around the corner. He only sent one unit. The infantry is trying to walk him off the table. And we're in a firefight in the centre. White flank, artillery is blazing away. We are starting to do a little bit of damage. Look for the red pips. And I'm set this up as a trap on the right flank where the infantry will take them to the front. They come on, charge me then. You only like cav, and then my cav will. So you see Roger trying to work out where his reserves can get to to help these guys out. I think I should have possibly stopped next to the swamp. I don't need to push all the way around the flank, but I'm thinking if my cavalry can get around the side, it would be a real nuisance, especially when he tries to bring his reserve up because the scouting will stop the reserve move. So we're getting sucked into a lot of time and effort on the flanks. Turn four, 10 points for the Austrians. Here we are, enjoy yourself. Okay, so what it's allowed to do, top left cavalry comes away, and we've drawn some out from the reserve. That heavy cab, you see the top middle is coming out. And because I've gone a bit too far, they've got the charge on me now. Uh, don't really fancy those odds very much. Austrian cab will beat fresh French cab, never mind beaten up ones. And we're firefighting the middle. There we go, the centre, is artillery blazing away. And really waiting for things to happen. We're getting sucked into these flank attacks. So we've moved away from the two to one. There's my go in the middle, plugging the gap. We looked at it and thought, oh, ch charging to the rear. But obviously you can't go across the front of another unit. And if I was one of those blokes, I wouldn't do that either. Because they're going to be right behind you in a minute. There we are, to return my generosity, I get rolled a three points. So that's it for my turn. Okay, so the cavalry, <laughs> the cavalry have to retreat a bit now because that heavy cavalry's seen us off. But I'm happy with this. The more we fanny about in the flanks, it's just soaking up time. It's the objectives in the middle, so go fill your boots. All right, so um, the pockets in the middle doing the casualty. Well done. And those centre columns starting to advance. 
and the artillery is blazing away in a beautiful well sunshine and again put up the top we managed to drive off the artillery again i was going for that cheeky second hit so they get destroyed but one hit to slow them up for a couple of turns i'm just stalling and delaying i'm just not getting the activation points to be aggressive i always think you'll try and be aggressive in these games keep putting the pressure on your opponent so of course now he's come around blocking off my cavalry just sucked out another reserve so that's good 10 5 7 activation points the austrian And they're charging in on this right flank, sent some better troops in. And again, like I said, we're just trying to mess about here, really. But don't, this flank's a bit more open than the left flank. I should have possibly reinforced this earlier. Left flank's to be left hanging out. And the attack's starting to come through the middle and the shooting. And the artillery again hits. So this poor unit's in the front, covering the artillery. Um, you know. I'm just getting slowly blasted. If I could get some activation points, I would get them out. It's not getting the chance. So sorry, lads. Yeah, your job is to bleed for your country today. All right, to the right on flank. They're chasing each other around. Trying to get to the crucial bits in the middle when that charge finally comes. All right, so we're shooting away. I've just shown this because it's just frustrating. A couple of skirmishes, but they're out of the guard, so the flight doesn't count. And this is the sort of jiggling you do on the low level. We're trying to get this, my battalion, shoot in the corner. So I can shoot him, he can't shoot me. So we're playing hide and seek around the woods. Just soaking up activation points in time. But I'm also looking for some counterplay. I can't find any. I need a nice wide area to get those conscripts rolling. Okay, so exchanging fire there. So doing a little bit of damage of the shooting. My artillery, it's got a breather really. I'm not seeing where the threat's coming from, so they've reloaded. Won't be shooting this turn. Uh, infantry is obviously got prepared. So he's got cavalry wandering around. All right, turn six. So uh, skip through these a bit. Uh, another nine activations for the Austrians. <laughs> keep going. So those are keep going, keep going. And as we turn fire, of course, the fives do count the other way. So we've got skirmishes, and they are using two hits. So that plug is going. Can't think about take. And. Uh, Disaster shooting around for me. They got whacked for two hits as well. It's really annoying because they got sort of parity. I know the French aren't quite as good, but they're really getting stuffed in the shooting battles. So I've got to take them out or reinforce them. So that's that's Aust uh, Roger there drawing up my reserves. So Roger's being aggressive again, trying to get some pressure on me uh, on the flanks. It's hard to come through the middle so far. I think he really wants to clear out everything before the central push. I'm not sure if he'll get time to do that. Anyway, I've got to roll one hit, but that turned out to be enough. Ha ha. <laughs> this is you have to roll well. You just need your opponent to uh, roll worse. What they say, I haven't got to run faster than the lion. Just run first faster than the slowest person. So you see there, French cavalry's down to two, but they have pushed them back. Um, so I've got two badly battered units. Do you get them out, or do you keep them there? So you can see the overall situation on the battlefield. The Austrian flanks are being slightly reinforced and pushing in, but nothing really major in the centre yet. Reserves are intact. So I've been forced now to bring up infantry on the left just to reinforce that flank. I want to commit as little as possible. The main shove is going to be in the centre. So this is where it's a tricky one. You want to keep propping up the uh, flanks. Anyway, no pressure again, so the artillery gets a chance to reload. On the right flank, my boys try and return, not doing an awful lot. So these two are really looking poor now, both down to a couple of pips. Um, I can't see an easy way of getting them out. Sorry, guys. Uh, so we're doing some shooting. This is the centre. If you remember, the unit is blocking just the side of the wood. Okay, turn seven. Oh, just the nine points for the Austrians this turn. All right, so the flank. And sure enough, <laughs> takes a gamble. Three dice against two. I've fluffed completely. Uh, he's got the two hits required to destroy the French cavalry. So I've lost a unit, and the right flank is now looking very open. But it's not such a worry unless a lot of troops start coming through it. But, uh, uncomfortable. Right, left flank, more aggression from the Austrians, charging in again with those great quality cav. I'm thinking, well, I've got more dice, but I'm re-rolling. What's the worst that can happen? It shouldn't be too bad. All right. And there's the center. Again, that attack is building, but not actually coming. All right, okay. So over to the right, there's the cavalry that was. Austrian cavalry now got a complete empty field. 
and some infantry slowly getting worn down. That right flank needs some help. Or I just abandon it. So there we are. So Johnny on the spot, reserve. His left flank again. Sorry, he jumped back and forth. Uh, flying through the turns. Johnny on the spot, the reserves come straight on. Heavy carb and charge them. We're going to clear them out. And as you can see, the white arrow, the infantry skedaddling to the corner. And they'll probably hide there for the rest of the game. Right, artillery is blazing away on his artillery. Uh, we really want to take a chunk out of the spearhead of his assault. If we can batter them down, something else has to go in the front. Because they're also acting as a screen for the grenadiers that are surely going to follow in a minute. Okay, gets a little bit complicated on the left. But as you saw, the reserves came on. Uh, went steaming in there and sent the Austrians packing. So left flank's looking fine. Done very well, actually. Although, in fairness, the Austrians have only committed a couple of units. Uh, the unit in the centre might get some help now. Uh, artillery, I say we really try and knock out the head of that column. <sighs> Not doing much, though. Yeah, so Rod is setting a cunning plan here. There's a bit of a trap. By shuffling his cavalry sideways, you'll see more detail in a minute, it blocks in my infantry from retreating. So he gets a successful charge to the front, they're destroyed. And he's got more dice. The gamble is, though, if he doesn't, my heavy cav, who are fresh, and just come charging across from the reserve, they will bash into the cavalry and they'll have no route to retreat and they will be destroyed. Turn eight. Ten points for the Austrians. Do what you like. Just go for it. Okay, so left flank um, and centre. Shooting, we're losing that battle. But turns have been soaked up. Okay, so my artillery takes some incoming. Uh, luckily it wasn't two, but anyway, it's got to retreat. I tried to retreat back with a yellow arrow, as you can see, but he can't quite clear the units behind him. So, no longer restrained by the arc, he can take a more acute angle. But the artillery go to the side, which is actually a much better spot, because it gives my uh, infantry a clear run to go forward and engage. And they've got a nice enfilading fire, and as a further bonus, uh, they're further away from the infantry, so they get more chance to shoot before being uh, run over. Oh yeah, so here's the, the trap set, so the, the cavalry has gone in. Uh, not in, but behind my infantry. In comes the other ones, uh, rolling with four attack dice. I've only got two dice. Um, the attackers, the Austrians roll four dice, get two hits. And yes, their French also get two hits. So they see them off. So now it's the Austrian cav who are hoisted by their own petard, well and truly. And the infantry are backed off. Suddenly, with the fresh cavalry coming across, Right flank, short up, okay. So the French cab go in, and six dice against two. Even French, early French cavalry can win that one. And that cavalry is destroyed, and a nice little nuisance gone. <laughs> there you go, so you can see where the artillery retreated to, and they've now turned round to my activation. Hey, guess what, I get three points. So turning them round and doing the charge was all I got to do. Drats. But the charge, as I said, went really well. Three sixes, didn't even bother with fours and fives. Enough to destroy that cab. Only take one casualty. Turn nine. So, uh, including this turn, seven turns to the end. Um, and Austrian colonies start getting moving, and only six points this turn. So, sure enough, the artillery counter battery fires. The artillery, my artillery, loses again, has to retreat again. Uh, it's not so much the position it ends up in, it's the fact they can't shoot or reload for another turn while they turn round and using up valuable pips. And shooting in the middle. Again, we're losing that one. I need to start getting stuff out. Um, in fairness, what Roger's done is attack all across the front. I just don't have the activations to get guys out. I'm starting to lose units. Yeah, and there's confirmation of the artillery. I have to retreat even further. And I'm starting to get those out, the blocking unit. I don't want them destroyed. Can't take them off the table too close to the enemy. Got to get them out quick, 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 quick. The left flank is really flat, as you can see. There's just all on twos and stuff. And here we go now. Still waiting for this main attack to come through the gap. Artillery's in position. Uh, infantry's gone to prepared because he's brought up some nasty cavalry. Okay, more manoeuvring on the right flank. I'm now trying to extricate my infantry because they are um well they're almost dead and I I don't want them destroyed so what can we do? And that's it. Only five points for the French, so again a short turn. Right, so the artillery's blazing away, the infantry's blazing away, everyone's blazing away. <laughs> we don't do anything. I don't think anything at all. It's just one of those days on the dice. Alright, so turn ten, six points. Uh pretty low score. See what the options can do with that. Here comes the attack. 
finally turn 10 is it too late is it in time starting to build up some momentum but my defenses are still pretty much intact there so I'm thinking well bring it on and it's chasing up through the gap I'm thinking only five well including this one six turns to go five turns to go Rogers house turn already I could play for time I can just slowly retreat these and then never get to the objectives what I don't want to do though is having destroyed my army brig Okay, and there's the charge onto the guns. I couldn't do anything about that. Everything blazed away at his cavalry, but nothing hit. So, free hit on the guns. Yeah, useless anyway. And they've gone the proper smoke. And the sentry, you see the other stuff coming up. Luckily, I rolled that low six, so the main column can't get going now. And that delay is quite crucial. It gets me an extra turn. Mess up uh, the Austrians' calculations. <coughs> And the other consolation, of course, is that um, that Austrian cav is now quite surrounded and the other units going out. So it's really felt like coming piecemeal. The one cavalry regiment on its own, the infantry was on its own, being pushed away. You need the numbers. It hasn't really happened on that main thrust. And then there's me just get, getting out because I don't want those units destroyed. They're all on ones and twos. So I keep pulling them back. I've got reserves, so the reserves can plug the gap if ever I get a chance. So there's our isolated French cavalry, the ones in the hill are turning to get the shot next turn. These lot blaze away and completely miss. It's like, oh, come on, guys. And we shoot in the middle and completely miss. <laughs> and on the right, at least that skirmish of fire, I do finally get a five to count. So all that shooting sucked into the trap. Only one uh, damage point can happen. All right, turn 11. So we get to the witching hour now. 11 points, just what the Austrians need to get the attack going. And here it comes. Units are starting to thunder in um, and just engage. I start seeing more and more. He's having to jiggle around because of the casualties, and my guys on the hill are threatening. And this cavalry, I think, ah, oh, what the heck? We're stuck here anyway. Let's go for it. And the white card at the top of the grenadiers and the cuirasses appearing. So this is it. We're finally on. The game's afoot. Yeah, he's not charging the infantry, escaping all that shooting twice in a row, so they're retreating. There's Cav charging in again, of course. And here we go. We saw them off this time. And the lucky bonus with the cavalry is they've got nowhere to go without leapfrog into the back. So gets them out of my little uh, shooting uh, what they call crossfire. So there's the overall situation. As you can see, my left flank's being battered back, right flank's being battered back. But the strength, the center's actually holding out well. It's actually pushed the Austrians back a bit. My four for activations. Ah, oh, there's so many things I want to do. I just didn't get to do them. I've got so many units I want to get out of there before they get destroyed and everything else. Uh, ah! So my turns are quite quick, really. Do one or two things and that's it. Oh, then watch the artillery miss as well, of course. Don't forget that bit. And I've only got one of those to miss with now. So there we are. So we're trying to get them out on the far right. That infantry's down to one and they're just running. And I've brought up in the middle. See the white arrow in the middle? They're my heavy cavalry. And they're going to be a real threat on the flank of the Austrians. Just as the columns are coming in, if they march in, great. I'll slam in with a flank, with heavy cavalry. You have to deal with them. Even if it just means bringing his cavalry out to um, enough cover. On the left flank, uh, brought some more heavy cavalry out. And again, we're just setting it. So if he does come through that gap, I've got a charge. And I'm also threatening a charge on the cavalry up by the lake. And this is where the frustration comes in. Guys in the hills shoot, do nothing. Um, brigade next to the head of his column, shoots, does nothing. <laughs> Come on, guys. Put some holes in them. There's a lot coming. If you don't stop them, they're going to be stopping us. <sighs> Frustration. Uh, oh, the big yellow markers, by the way, represent uh, prepared units. I know they're a bit ugly, but uh, it does help on the photographs as well. Uh, so you see the heavy cavalry coming across, and he's lining up some cavalry to go and match it. Turn 12. And 10 points for the Austrians, so that attack's going to get some uh, speed after all. Yeah, you see all the white arrows appearing as this central thrust starts to build momentum. But the real gutter, if you look, is the artillery opened up on that heavy artillery, uh, heavy cavalry. I've got sweeping from the right. The threat, you remember the threat? Well, three points of damage from the artillery. That is a killer. They've basically gone from a five-point threat to a two-point liability. So finding somewhere for them to attack, I'm now going to find somewhere for them to hide. Ah, oh, and the right flank's wide open. And I'm starting to get a little bit worried about breakpoints. Can lose seven, lost a couple already. They're very vulnerable. Couple hanging on the left, vulnerable. Infantry running on the right. 
that takes me to six. And there's a big attack of Austrians coming down the middle. There are a close up. Ah, the best laid plans, eh? So not only they taken down to two, but there's heavy cavalry facing them. Great. In case the Austrian cavalry has gone flying down the middle, it was on four points when it hit, but the three points to the French was enough. They've taken two damage, and actually this is the moment where we had to work out the retreat because they've got no legal retreat, as it were, within the arc, so they have to leapfrog over the back of the infantry, which is great for him. It gets them out of the crossfire and clears the way for his uh, fresh units to come through, and I don't get to destroy a unit. Let's see, shooting's doing a little bit of damage, and this is the climax. There we go, they're retreating. You see the yellow arrow, they come right to the back. I've got a bit of breathing space again. Um, yeah, there's a bit of a hole, but they're going to become charging through now. Uh, is it too late? Right flank is just a chase. <laughs> My guys uh, are desperate trying to get off the table if I get enough activation to get them far enough away. Yeah, and the guys in the hill do a little bit of damage on him, which is good. But I think I'm. Let me see the picture. Yeah, I think I'm going to be more aggressive here because the. His cavalry's down to two pips, you know, and I'm acting like he's got nasty cavalry all around. I've got everything with the yellow prepared. Um, I think I could really go for it a bit more here. Be more aggressive, use the shock factor, and trade off numbers. I'm a little bit nervous because I've got all those units almost breaking on the flanks. Yep, so I've got them in range. Everything's opening up. That infantry on the left, two points, all we've got left. Everything's shooting, nothing again. One in the middle, shooting's been dismal. Cavalry gone to hide over by the artillery. <laughs> have to really protect from the cavalry now. I mean, that's a disaster. I was fired at the cavalry, his cavalry, to try and knock him down a bit. They miss as well. And this is where um, Roger tells me afterwards he thinks he missed a chance. Because after running through the artillery, they could have pushed on to pick off my cavalry or my fleeing infantry and not try to help so much in the middle where they weren't a lot of use. He was probably right. Back over to the left flank. My cavalry now, I'm, I'm just trying to, I've suddenly realised if I can just pick off a few units around the flanks, I can actually get the Austrians close to breaking. So the first time in the game, I feel like a bit of um, counterplay, so me just annoying and getting in the way and being a pain, being a pest. So there we are, we got launching into those, and that's a real bonus. One more hit would have been destroyed, but they're down to one, and they've got nowhere to hide. I'm going to be right behind them. And again, it's activation points the Austrians have to use that they can't use in the middle. See him fleeing, and we're going to chase him down as soon as we get a chance. Because I, <laughs> I haven't got unlimited activation points either. Alright, so lots of white arrows. Have a pause or a proper look. The double arrow you see is the reserve move at the top. You see that core did come through the gap in the fields. They were never going to go around the other side. It's too far. But they've got to get through, and there's not much time left. Uh, you see the guns are being charged. Uh, those conscripts in a very thin line. I desperately need more activations to get reserves behind them and make that a double line and really hold that center. Okay, left flank. Um, just try to chase down those last points there because they've got infantry and cavalry. And he's using those to try and stop me getting the, f the fleeing unit. All right, back to the crunch part in the center. As you can see, the guns want to get run over. Um, <laughs> everything's getting bashed up in the middle. Alright, so the artillery's disappeared. And my cavalry's got hit by the artillery again. Give me a break. So that cavalry's, my heavy cavalry's useless now. Almost died. Like one point, two points. We just trying to get them out. They're actually going to run up and hide by those uh, that wood to get out of all the charge arcs and out of the arc of fire of the artillery. Because I'm very dangerously close to breaking as well. And this way he thinks he made, uh, yeah. Because that cav the, sorry, the Austrian cavalry could have gone and chased them down. They turned around to try and help on the attack in the middle. But they can't help. They're charging. They can't combine artillery, uh, cavalry and infantry. Alright, so I've realised here, because if my cavalry charge, they have to charge the threat. But the infantry can double move to block them. Just go in there and screen them. The only valid target for the cavalry is now the rear of the other unit. And I pick up another broken unit. So a little bit of clever play rather than grand tactics to get some extra points out of this. He's about to see that at the top of the table. Um, we're still holding the hill and this on the three on the left, bottom left, they are all knackered. I mean they're stuffed. They've just got to get away from trouble. Don't give any more broken units. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Getting complicated. So I managed another rubbish roll of activations, can't remember what it was, but I managed to get one unit with a double arrow reserved to prop up the middle. 
And finally, I've realized those cavalry are only two. I shouldn't be so scared. Let's start using my numbers. Because it's a nice position in a way, because he can only be about four units wide. And if I did it better, I could probably get six units wide. And even win a firing match with a better quality Austrians. I can also afford to lose more. So finally, the French shooting starts to have an effect. And what a good time to start having an effect. The red dots are appearing, doing some damage. Uh, the crucial turns coming up. And I just managed to escape on the right to the city. This cavalry could have possibly escaped, run those down. All my cavalry are now hiding by the wood. Turn 14, only two turns to go. Eight activation dice, enough for the Austrians to do what they want to, I think. Alright, so that's where I ran down that unit that was on one. Didn't treat the weird angle because they were double moving and couldn't pivot. So a bonus point. I think I need about two more Austrian units to have a chance to actually break them. So I always think winning by not losing the objectives is a bit unsatisfying because it is really hard to take objectives in this, especially with Austrians against French. We have tried it before, it's a really tough ask. And here comes the main attack now. The Grenadiers and the good infantry are piling in. All the shooting, and I've had one of those lucky turns I needed. If you look on the left, no red dots. So it's all down to the charge. And this is when you realize that um, this heavy cavalry were useless, you know. They couldn't really help in this. Okay, so there we go. And the first one hits. Ow! Four hits from those Grenadiers. They are nasty. Four dice back. I do nothing. If just one had hit... That French unit would escape. Just one. That's all I needed. But no, they're destroyed. So now then, he's going for a win by breaking my army now. <laughs> I think I'm on threes and fours around the place. And those grenadiers are munching. All right, there's a puff of smoke where they used to exist. The unit next to them is going to have a go now. They're not grenadiers. Um, and we see them off. <laughs> Thank goodness. A couple of hits each, I think it was. Score draw. All right. So feel free to have a look at that. You can see charges are coming in. Grenadiers have gone through. The other one's bounced off. And he's desperately trying to thread those other Grenadiers through to get them into the action. Because that core, the top right corner came in very late into the game. Right, now we get to the situation where it gets very interesting. And I'd really like you to have a good look at this. And let me know what you think as well. Because I've realised if you can just break a couple of Austrian units, they're broken. And not only that, they're nowhere near the objective. So I was lining up all the charges, and if you look, start from left to right, down the hill, applying to those guys with help from there. They're only on a few. Be able to do it's going to be squeezed to get the two in, but I think with the pivot, that works. Similarly, this is where I made a mistake. You see the two red arrows down the bottom there? One is for the cavalry to charge in, and one is for the infantry, but they can't do a joint attack. So that kind of messes up this plan, and I was going to do a, a kind of reckless charge at the top right. Um... <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you go into a stronger unit? Only on four. I lose, go down to two, count the charges me, that unit's destroyed. I can't do the double attack in the middle because the cavalry can't join up with the infantry. So that's not going to work either. I think I can squeeze the two to one in the top left there, but um, I'm not sure much that's going to gain me either. So I'm looking for a way to break a couple of units and try and win the game that way. Now what you can't see here is that the Grenadiers in the middle of the screen are actually down to four points. So, unfortunately, I can't get the cavalry because they can't do a combined charge with the infantry. But the guys on the bottom are five, plus one for shock is six. Other infantry are four, plus one for shock is five. Add those together, 11. I actually think the guys in the middle were regulars, so they get an extra one. It was 12 dice. Four dice for the grenadiers. They fluff. Boom! Gone. Four hits in one turn. Fantastic. Also, we charged down the hill and won that combat and sent those flying. And we had the charge against, uh, I think it was the cavalry, was it? Uh, it was anyway, but it was left with just two and beat them as well. So that's two units down, one more unit, and the Austrians are broken. So they've suddenly gone the last two turns from having lost that trap unit on the right and nothing else. To say losing three more units very quickly, and now the Austrians are in trouble. And we came up to last turn. They need, I think, Two more units to break the French. It's getting a bit of a nail biter. So, as you can see, the Grenadiers have come stomping down the middle. Oh, that was close. I think you need to kill four. He's killed three. So you can see the yellow arrow where those guys go fleeing. His shooting wasn't very effective. And this is the spot where you get the key decision. 
need to break one more Austrian unit. Can you see how to do it? We've got pretty strong units at the top. Can't get to the cavalry on two at the very top. Um, I think they're full strength, sort of middle right. Then just in front of the field on the top right, that unit's down to one. But he's positioned them out of the charge range or charge angle of any of the infantry. I'm lining up his grenadiers, but he's going to be tougher. These guys are on like uh, six or seven. I think six, that's right. They're on six. So I'd need to win by six to destroy them in one round. Cavalry's only three. Infantry, four, three. And the ones coming down the hill are four. So even if I got the triple attack and get 11 attacks against six dice to win by six, unlikely. But then I saw there was a way to do this. Yeah, so the way we do it now is um, the unit comes down off the hill and screens the grenadiers. It doesn't actually engage them. We've got any chance of losing another unit, otherwise the French will break. What this now means is the cavalry down the bottom on three points can no longer charge the grenadiers, which means they can charge the unit in the top right that's only on one point. So they've hidden, but not far enough. Boom, in goes that cavalry charge. Win or lose, you're going to do one damage, and that unit's broken, and so is the Austrian army. Nicked it at the close of turn 15. And as you can see, the arrow coming on off the hill, but not charge the grenadiers. Probably not going to win that. So just there to make a path for the cavalry to go flying through. Hooray! Stole it! I really felt like I stole that one. There's been no damage being done to the Austrians in the last couple of turns. It is tough. It really is tough, the Austrians. It's such a fragile army, you know, if he'd gone more aggressively from the beginning, those five units could be lost much sooner and the army broken much earlier. Um, I've got quite fancy having to go with the Austrians, because I have to say, it's very difficult. I've tried attacking with them before, very difficult. There must be a way of doing this. I have a few ideas, so leave some comments if you've got some ideas, what sort of approach would work better for the Austrians, or give them a better chance. Because if it comes like this, a bit of a grind... They're probably going to lose just by weight of numbers and breaking earlier. So there we are. A nice sneak win for the Austrians. And there you are. as a close-up of uh, Hazar's strength three winning the game in all their glory. Uh, we did roll off the dice, and I won it anyway. That's just enough. I don't think Roger was in the mood for rolling the dice, but there you are, I wanted to. And so I think they ended up uh, on strength two and very vulnerable, but that's all that matters as darkness starts to fall. Um, we also would have picked up this unit in the top eventually because you've got the cavalry charging and knocking them back and the infantry unit going to take them out as well. So I think that would have been a bonus. And the right flank, this is where the game could have been lost. This was a shocker, a disaster. So we've got that unit running away on one point, cavalry hiding by the trees, another turn, and the Austrian cavalry would have run down at least one of them. Um, and that would be enough to break the French. So <laughs> that's how close a game it was. The full 15 turns, uh, 30 goes, if you like. Uh, the left flank went brilliantly. Uh, they committed the minimum number of troops. They caused real problems. Actually got round that left flank. They got an open flank to storm round and actually nick the objective. They got a bit longer. So there's, there's two sides to this. But these units, the bottom, these three units, they're all hanging on by ones and twos and stuff. So squeaked home by the skin of our teeth. And, well, there we are. Quite an exciting game. Well, very exciting game, actually. And lots of little intricate movement and trying to get the angles and really been a nuisance and I think if you're the attacker you kind of have to just grit your teeth sometimes and plow through that uh, and just hope you don't need too many units it is tough there's no real advantage for the attack you don't get extra points or anything and you've got to walk into the, the teeth of the bullet sometimes I guess the trade-off is defenders have to deploy first you see where you're going you can aim your attack so overall the game was went really well very smoothly the reloading with the artillery works fine but that's for us because we only play a couple of artillery aside I know in the tournament some people had five or six artillery, it wouldn't work. It would just become like World War One artillery duel. So uh, I recommend if you play a balanced game. I also recommend Blue Shea only ever play with a couple of units of artillery. Um, they can have an effect, a devastating effect, but not control the game. Scouting wasn't such a big factor this time, partly because we've changed the rules and you can't stop a column. Uh, what's the other one? The general advance would have been useful for me in defending. Cause I could parked in next to the town and got all my reserves around and rejigged everything and that just seems un I don't know, I don't know why that rule's there. It seems unrealistic to me. You're under pressure and the general goes riding around moving every single unit. That'd be the most 
unlikely times. Anyway, there you go. It's a personal view. Let me know what you think as well. And be a couple of weeks before we have another sort of Napoleonic game. But, uh, so look forward to that. Uh, please leave comments. I always like to know people out there and if you're enjoying it. And um, uh, subscribe. Yeah, there's more stuff coming up. I'm also doing a short video on the retreat rules, which um, Roger's done all the work. <laughs> Probably have to explain to me. Oh, I've just got to try and get it right now. It's complicated. But once you've got it, it, it is logical. Anyway, um, until the next time, keep rolling.